send you a message. Okay? I'm going to send, you can stand over there. Uh, and, but before I send the message, and I have the messages just in an envelope here, okay? Just so that everyone else can see what's happening. I'm going to pass you an envelope, not yet, and you're going to see on the front there's some information. There's some information on the front, and you'll open it, and there's a message inside. You'll read the message, make sense of it, and then maybe I'll send you another message. Now, the idea is very simple. Our normal communications. I send a message to someone else. And we're going to do it with envelopes. But of course, in communication systems, we do it with uh, message across the communications network or across a transmission system. Now, just for this simple example, when I send a message, this is what it looks like. Okay? Here's the envelope. And on the front, you, you may not be able to see it, but when you read it, you'll see that there's four pieces of information on the front. There's the source, me, I'm the source, my address. In this case, the address is my name. It's abbreviated sometimes source to SRC. So you'll see SRC equals Steve. But that's the same in all messages. And the destination in this case is a student. Okay, I, I didn't predict your name, so I just left student on there. And also, just for fun, I include a sequence number. So I've got a number of messages. Sequence number keeps track of the ordering of those messages. Okay, so I'll send them in order, and we often use the sequence number to keep track. Okay, this is the first, the second, and third. With a sequence number, in this example, I'm using two bits. What's the first message going to be? Sequence number 00, zero meaning just in decimal zero. The next one will be what? Zero 01, then what? One zero. One zero. The fourth message will be? The fifth message? Uh, with just two bits, we can only have four unique values. So in fact, what we do with sequence numbers when we have a, a limited number of bits, we go back to zero zero. We wrap around. Okay? So it's usually we have a limited number of bits, so we just get up to the maximum and then come back to zero and, and so on. It won't matter in our example the value so much. Just for fun also, we're going to include some data, seven bits of data. You'll see that the first seven bits are, are these seven uh, digits. And one parity bit on the outside. Remember last week we did a parity bit? This is the even parity check. If this is the data, there are two ones, so I add a parity bit of one, so there are an odd number of ones. Okay, so I've created this data. What's the receiver going to do? You're going to receive, all right, you check it's to you, well, they're, hint, they're all to you. You check that it's the right sequence number, you get them in order. Then you'll open up, and inside there will be some data. If you can find it. And you'll see that some data inside. And what do you do when you get the data? What else do you check? You should check the parity bit. Make sure that there's no errors. For example, you receive seven bits and you count the number of ones. If there's an even number of ones here, well, you expect an odd number in total. One plus two. Okay? Any questions before we start? What you need to do is just take it out, the data, check the parity, make sure it's correct, and then tell people what data you received. Uh -huh. Now, we communicate with binary. Not very interesting to send binary. So the other thing you'll do is, and I've got something to help you, because I can never remember. You'll convert the binary to ASCII. So I'll give you an ASCII table. We want to send a meaningful message. For example, you have the table in front of you. The others can see this. If you receive 100, the first three bits are 100. The last four bits are one with three zeros, so you look up and you get the letter H. And you'll tell everyone what data you received, the letter. And they will keep track of 
the data you receive. Okay? You can, you can help her look up. That's okay. Any questions? I'm going to send data. Think of this as our packet or frame. The data is inside, the seven bits. We attach some extra information to make the protocol work correctly. Just check the parity, look up, tell us the letter. Okay? Uh, they don't care. Yeah, the letter's enough. You can read out the number, but uh, just the letter is the main, that's the information we want, the letter, because it was an English message. <laughs> I would never send such a message. <laughs> right, okay? Oh. I'll send the first message. Let me give you some time. And the second message. Oh. And the <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> What's our problem? <laughs> All of my messages are being dropped. She's too slow. <laughs> the receiver is too slow in this case. So I was just sending them my messages at a normal speed and it takes you some time to process the data. Okay? That is, it takes time to open up the message, look at the data, check the parity bit, and then do the ASCII table lookup. But while you were doing that, I sent the next message. Okay? Then I sent the next one. Because I don't know if I'm on the other side of the link in a real communication system. I don't know how fast you are at processing. Let's try again. Let's make sure I get them in the right order. I'll take the first one back. We'll try again, and hopefully our receiver will not drop any messages. Maybe suggest what the receiver can do to, to improve that performance. You ready? What are you going to do to improve? So what happened then is I sent the first message and while... <laughs> okay, good. So I send a message and then what do you do with it? There's only one computer, one receiver. What can you do? Cue it. Put it in some... Save it for later. Okay? Okay, that's a good choice. So you receive a message and put it into some memory, if it's a computing device, some buffer to save it until later. How much memory have you got? How many messages can you queue until you run out of memory? What if I have, I've got in my bag another one million envelopes? <laughs> What's going to happen? Your, your queue will fill up. A computing device has a has a limited queue, has a limited amount of memory to save the messages it receives. So the same problem can potentially happen. That is, yes, you save one in memory, then the next one's received, but what if they keep coming? And they keep coming. Still, the queue will eventually fill up, and what will happen when the queue fills up? Let's say you can fit no more on the table, you'll start to drop them again. This is just the simple concept of overflow of the receiver because the sender sends too fast. How do we fix it? Assuming you have a limited amount of memory, you can only store one in your hand at a time. Your queue is your hands. How do we fix this problem? You're processing that one? Your cue is your hands. No, you, you're not allowed to put them on the table. You still need to tell them the data. How much data have you received? Zero. Think simpler. What can we do so that I don't send too fast that I overflow her? Any suggestions for our receiver? 
how can we can avoid me sending too fast for her to receive? She tells me to slow down. How about we try this? Don't cheat and read the data first. <laughs> can I have my messages back, please? Can I have my messages back, please? In the right order? All right, that's all right. All right. The suggestion was, the suggestion was that you tell me to slow down if I'm sending too fast. Very simple. Okay? You know how fast you can process the data. Okay? And a simple way is when you're finished processing one data message, tell me I can send the next one. <laughs> okay, so she sends something back telling me to wait. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. Okay, now I get some indicator to send the next message. I'm waiting, I want to send. I'm still waiting. Okay, we don't need to go through the rest of the data. Uh, okay, so we have a problem. In, in, without any control, we have a receiver and we have a sender in a situation where the sender can send faster than the receiver can process, then we'll overflow the receiver. That's a problem. As we saw at the start, when the receiver gets overflowed, the receiver starts to drop messages. We drop the, the messages being sent and they don't get received. So how do we fix it? To f avoid overflow, tell the sender to slow down. And it's called flow control. The receiver controls the flow of data to them by telling me to slow down. And how did you tell me to slow down? What did you say? You said wait. So I sent data, you sent back some indicator saying wait. So we need some extra communications to, to inform me to slow down and or to inform me that I'm allowed to send the next one. And that's what we we'll call flow control protocols. Okay, one more. You're going so well. That's flow control. We'll do that today, but another thing we'll cover in another lecture a little bit later. Uh, what if, uh, what if there's an error? That is, uh, let me change something. Can I borrow someone's pen? I haven't got an error yet. What if, in the normal case, and I think you've predicted what the data is, so there's no need to open read. But I send the messages at a normal speed. The receiver processes reads, reads out H, and then no need to do it. You can predict the letters, can't you? Receives the next one, checks the parity. Parity's OK, yes. Next one, parity's OK. Uh, next one, parity's OK. The, let's say this one, the parity's wrong. What if there's an error? You detect the wrong parity bit. That is, the parity check fails, what happens? Okay. You can send back a message saying that data I received is in error. And that's what we'll use as error control. That is, there's some acknowledgement coming back, not just the data comes back, but some other special message comes back saying the data you just sent me is in error. Whether it's a parity bid or some other check, but there's some error. What if what if I sent a message and it didn't get to you? Then you receive the next one. What happens? The data was lost, but what do you do? Do you know that data was lost? You can't see that it's lost. What's on the front of your message? What's on the front of the previous message? What's the sequence number of this one? 
The previous message was 1-1, one, one, or 3. The next message is... 0-1. 1. or 1 in decimal. What's gone wrong? But we expect zero, zero. 0 is missing. Zero, 0 is missing. So we expect to receive the messages in sequence. That's the idea of the sequence number. If you receive out of sequence, that's an indicator that a message has been lost somewhere between the transmitter and receiver and is an indicator of an error. And as a result, when you receive one out of sequence, what will you do? Tell me that there's an error. That's what this entire topic's about. It's a little bit more detailed, but we'll go through and explain how we do that more formally in communication networks. Okay, so in summary, thank you for helping. Give our receiver a hand for helping. Thank you. And in summary, if I send too fast, I'll overflow the receiver and we'll lose data. As a result, we use flow control. And the basic approach is that the receiver controls how fast I send. It tells me to slow down or it tells me when I can send. That's flow control. Another problem is I send data and there's an error in the data. We use an error detection to de detect and we can send back some message indicating there's an error. That's part of error control. And also error control, I send a message that doesn't get to the receiver. The sequence numbers can help in identifying that some data was lost. So that's also part of error control. I think you predicted the message uh, or close to, you predicted the first five letters. So this is what, you, if everything was okay, this is what you would have received, the 12 different messages. What if maybe there was an error? One message was lost. There are 12 messages. One didn't get to the destination and one arrived in error. If we didn't have error control, you may have received this data. And this may be that you don't like database systems or it's, uh, the exam was hell. Uh, so we need to make sure the data gets delivered correctly. Okay? And that's what we use error control for. We'll try and illustrate that with our uh, description of the different protocols. Any questions before we go back to the lecture slides?